Want to learn how to generate your own curves of pursuit using Manum? Stick around and I'll show you one possible technique. For the last three months, I've been participating in the animation generation collaboration put on by the Talking Maths in Public website. I've been using the Python package ManumGL, which is a free library created by 3Blue1Brown, and I have shown how to animate the circle and sine curve animation, how to show polyhedral nets folding and unfolding, and how to create one version of a visual proof of the Pythagorean theorem. This month, the website asks us to show curves of pursuit. Uh, there's lots of ways to think about curves of pursuit, but the first thing that I thought about when I read this prompt was the famous Martin Gardner cover from July of 1965, which shows this picture here. This picture is supposed to represent four bugs. They start at the corners of the square, and basically the idea is instead of walking along the square, they immediately start walking towards the sort of next bug, but each bug does that, walking towards the next bug. And so what ends up happening is they sort of spiral in on one another until eventually they do meet together in the center. So I want to show how to create this kind of diagram, uh, which is essentially a bunch of nested squares. And along the way, what happens is you generate this particular arc right here. And this arc right here is an approximation of a so-called pursuit curve or a curve of pursuit. And so as a byproduct of creating this cool square diagram, I'll show how to get an approximation of this particular uh, curve right here. So let's jump right in. As you can see over here, um, I have my PyCharm open with a, basically a blank Python script. All I've done is added three lines that help me get started. These are the things that I have to have to run my Manum code. So what I want to do is I want to sort of build up and figure out what I'm going to do here. And I'm hoping to maybe generalize this at the end. So I'm going to start with a square, but I'm going to use a parameter for that. So I set n equals four to represent the four corners of the square. Then I'm going to create the points of the polygon, which I'll call poly points. And I want this list to depend on the number n. Um, the points of the regular polygon, and I'll maybe fix the radius at 2, uh, has coordinates the cosine of 2 times pi times i divided by n. I've missed a times here. Times. So that's the x coordinate of uh, the regular polygon uh, vertices. The y coordinate is 2 times the sine of the same number, 2 times pi times i divided by n, and then I want the z coordinate to be 0 for now, for i in the range of n. And notice I've divided by n, and so with any luck, that's the coordinates of the, of the unit square in this, or the, the square of with a side length, I get, or the radius, interior radius of 2, and that's because I've chosen n equals 4. Um, just to check that, I need to create the actual square, so I'm going to use Manum's polygon feature, and I'm going to basically list out uh, with this star operator the points and poly points. And then uh, I'll just uh, I'll play this real quick. So I'll show this thing being created. Show creation outer poly. And we'll go in here. And if we're at all any lucky, we run our code. I've got an error. You can see the error is this extra comma right here. Uh, I'll go back and try again. And there we go, we drew our square uh, pretty nice. Again, if you have to turn your head 45 degrees to see a square, it's a diamond, um, but it's a square nonetheless, just rotated. Um, good, now I wouldn't mind if that's a little bit bigger, so real quick, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna change the camera frame. So I'm gonna take self.camera.frame and I'm gonna change the height. So I'm gonna set the height to be uh, basically the height of the outer polygon that I just created, which we uh, get height. Um, so that gets the height. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I multiply it by 1.1 and you can see when I run it this time, now that square fills out basically uh, the whole side. One other thing I'm going to want because I'm going to draw a lot of these, I'm going to change the width. So I'm going to set the stroke width. So it's set, set stroke and I'm going to change the width to two. I think the default is four. So this is sort of a two point uh, line and we can see it should draw it just a little bit thinner. Okay, good. Um, so that's where I'm at. Okay, so how am I going to draw this Martin Gardner style thing? Well, Manum's actually really good at this kind of thing because it's going to draw, let's say, 200 squares 
Each of them is going to be a copy of this outer polygon that I've drawn, uh, slightly rotated and slightly scaled down. And so I'm going to use a for loop for that. Um, so the first thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of these things, the polys. The first one is just that original square, outer poly. Uh, then I'm going to use a for loop. So for i in the range, and again, you can choose any number you want. I think 200 should be more than enough for what I'm doing here, but we'll see what it looks like. Um, now sort of the interesting part. I'm going to create a temporary square, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the list that I have here, and I'm going to take the minus first entry. So that's going to be the last entry that I just put into the list, and I'm going to create a copy of that. So that should create a copy square. Um, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to scale it. Um, I played around a little bit with this at the beginning, but uh, I'll, I'll do it here anyway. I'm just going to create the scale factor up here. I think 0.95 worked pretty well for the square. So, um, but notice I put it back up here so that I can play with that parameter if I want to. So I'm going to scale the previous square copy by that scale factor, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to rotate it. Um, and I, again, I played around with this. I think pi over 60 radians is a pretty good small rotation. And then I'm going to take that temporary uh, square and I'm going to append it to my list. So what I did is I created a previous, a copy of the previous generated square. I scaled it slightly, I rotated it slightly, and then I put that into the list, and then I'm just going to do this 200 times. So each time I take the most recent square generated, scale it again, rotate it again, and so on. Um, and then what you should see is that I should be able to generate this, so just so we can see it happen. So I'm going to play, and I'm going to show the creation of... Um, so I don't want to show them all, and that's because uh, it's already drawn the outer polygon. So I'm just going to draw them from one on. Now, that's 200 squares, so I want it to be a little slow. So I'm going to run it in about, I don't know, 10 seconds and see what this looks like. So let's see if it does it. So there's my first square. And then, boom, look at that. It draws 200 squares, all slightly rotated. Um, and we get basically the picture we were hoping from the Martin Gardner uh, article. So you can see I just drew uh, the sort of bugs floating in on one another just using the approximation by drawing a bunch of rotated squares. So really 20 lines of code or so gets me to this pretty amazingly beautiful picture. Um, and again, like I said, real quick, uh, I can I, if I've done things right and change that, and I'll change the scale factor just a bit, all I did was change n to 5. If I'm lucky, it should draw a, a bunch of nested pentagons, and now you have five curves of pursuit that it's generating there. So this shows the power about how easy it was to generate a pentagon uh, of the same kind of thing. Um, but like I said, what I wanted to do is not just draw this cool sort of nested uh, squares or pentagons. Oops, uh, go four. Uh, so I didn't just want to draw this uh, cool nested squares. I sort of want to do something a little bit more interesting so that we can learn a little something about Manum. And what I want to do is I want to sort of try to generate this particular curve. In fact, all four of those curves. I'd like to generate them uh, systematically using Manum, at least approximations. And so um, the way I'm going to do that is uh, basically I'm going to try to create all four at once. And so um, to do that, first I need to create some colors. So I need a color list. And just because they're each going to be different colors so I can see them, I'll do a red, blue, green, or sorry, blue, red, green, uh, yellow. And just in case we ever go back, we'll do orange. So I've created my colors. And now I'm going to create a list of paths. So I'm going to call them the paths. It's going to start out as an empty list. And now basically I'm going to do the same thing. And, and what I hope to do is I hope to basically grab the upper point of each square and basically create a new object where I just kind of draw a line or a curve connecting all those points. So I'm going to create a brand new object for each one of these curves. And all I'm going to do is grab all of sort of the vertices of the square corresponding to this corner, then on a separate path, all the vertices of the squares corresponding to the top corner, and so on. So let's see how to do that. So again, um, it's going to be a for loop because I want to do the different ones. Um, in this case, there's going to be four, but in general, there'll be uh, n. Um, and then I'm going to create a set of temporary points. So I call it a list of temp points. And here's the interesting thing. Basically, I'm going to get the vertices of, the, of a square and... Uh, I'm going to get the vertices j, the jth vertex of the square, for each uh, x in the polys. 
So for each, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm na naming my polygons or my squares in this case X, I'm running through all the polygons that I have and I'm grabbing the jth vertex. And the jth vertex will either be the zeroth vertex, which is sort of like the first one, the second vertex, the third vertex, or the fourth vertex, uh, depending, or zero, one, two, three for a square, or zero, one, two, three, four for a pentagon and, and so forth. So that creates a bunch of points. And now I'm gonna create a temporary path, and this is sort of the cool thing that you can do, is you can create a brand new VM object, uh, and I'm just gonna make it empty. So it's basically an empty object right now, and then I'm gonna take the temporary path, and I'm gonna set its points. So I have a list of points, and I wanna set its points, and I wanna do that smoothly so that it doesn't just draw a bunch of straight lines, it sort of approximates with some curves, and I'm just gonna use the list of temporary points that I just created. Um, and then for each of these, uh, there are different ones, so I'm gonna set the stroke so that they're a different color. Uh, the color is the colors, and notice I can do colors J. And then I'm gonna take the paths and I'm gonna append the temporary path that I just created. Um, so that seems like a lot. I'm gonna wait for a second just so we can watch it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a list of animations, which is just gonna be a show creation. So I'm gonna show the creation of Y for each Y in the paths. And then self.play, and I'm gonna show, uh, I'm just gonna run that animation list, which I can do by doing star annies. And again, I probably wanna run this for about 10 seconds just so I can watch it actually happen. So with any luck, uh, I think we've done what I wanted, which is basically, okay, so we draw those nested squares, and now if we're lucky, we should see these curves drawing right along sort of these temporary lines. Um, now you can see I've got an error. It says VM object is, uh, is not defined, so I just have to go look up and up. I see, I've got a capital O. So VM object should be the right one. Okay, we have to watch this again, but it's pretty cool. Draw the square, draw the nested rotated squares, and then we're gonna try and match each of these curves in a different color. This one over here should be the first color of blue, red, and so on as we go clockwise. And sure enough, you can see, there we go, it draws them. And that's pretty awesome. So that's how we can create our own curves from a set of point using Manum. We can basically use this VM object empty, and then we can give it a list of points and ask it to sort of set those points smoothly, and it's gonna do its very best to interpolate with a curve. Um, just to see something a little cooler then, just to see this run, uh, I'll just do one or two more things just so that I can check it out. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fade out um, the paths, so I'll fade those out. Um, I can go to the very end of the of the animation, so if I just do a slash S, you can see it faded those out. Um, then I'm gonna do this exact same thing where I created uh, the all the squares. I'm gonna uncreate them. That's gonna give a, I think that'll give a cool effect of showing it uncreate. Um, and then I just wanna create those curves of pursuit again with the squares not there. Um, so let's see, so we'll, we'll wait here for a second, then we'll fade out the paths, uh, then we'll fade that out, and then we'll wait one more second, and then we will run the animation again. So with any luck here, oops, we'll see, okay, so at the end it's gonna look like that, which is exactly what I'm hoping for, and now let's see it play out. So again, we draw the square, now we draw all 200 nested rotated squares like we've done here, once that's done, it's taking a little bit long, so maybe I'll make that shorter. Once that's done, then we see the curves of pursuit drawing. Once again, we created those by using the vertices of the squares, nested squares. But now it's hard to see with all the squares, so we're gonna fade out the curves of pursuit. Now we're gonna do this cool thing where it's gonna uncreate the uh, curves of pursuit. You can see it looks like a big square opening up, pretty awesome. And now we're gonna redraw the curves of pursuit again, but without the underlying squares. And you can see that's sort of how the bugs would approach one another. And so that's pretty much all I was hoping to show you how to do. We didn't do a whole lot, but we did learn how to use for loops, pretty interesting. And you learned how to create your own um, path, your own object using a set of points so that you can create your own curve. The only thing that you could do to make this a little more fun is you could create a GIF or something of a bug and you could actually have that bug follow along, but I didn't have the time for that, um, so we'll just do this.
I hope you learned a little something and I, I'll try to put the code up on the GitHub. And if you are uh, interested, you can stick around for just a minute and I'll show the final product animation, maybe with a little bit of tweaking, uh, maybe with some dramatic music as I like to do. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you learned a little something and uh, check out that website. And if you have some way that you know how to create Curves of Pursuit, you should participate as well. There'll be new prompts, I think, coming up in the next couple of months. And so I'll do my best to keep up with it. Um, but I wanted to thank the organizers of that website uh, for giving us some prompts and giving us something to think about. This was a fun one.